whither wilt thou lead me? Speak, I'll go no further. Mark me. I will. My hour is almost come when I to sulfurous and tormenting flames must render up myself. Alas, poor ghost. Pity me not, but lend thy serious hearing to what I shall unfold. Speak, I am bound to hear. So art thou to revenge when thou shalt hear. What? I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night, and for the day confined fast in fires till the foul crimes that are done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away. But that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house, I could a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood, make thy two eyes like stars start from their spheres, thy knotted and combined locks to part, and each particular hair to stand on end like quills upon the fretful porpentine. But this eternal blazon must not be to ears of flesh and blood. List, list, O oh, list. If thou didst ever thy dear father love, O oh, God, revenge his foul and most unnatural murder. Murder? Murder most foul, as in the best it is, but this most foul, strange, and unnatural. Tis given out that sleeping in my orchard, a serpent stung me. So the whole of Denmark, by a forged process of my death, is rankly abused. But know, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life, now wears his crown. My prophetic soul, my uncle. Aye, that incestuous, that adulterate beast, with witchcraft of wit, with traitorous gifts. Oh, wicked wit and gifts that have the power so to seduce, one to his lustful shame, the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. Oh, Hamlet, what a falling off was there from me, whose love was of that dignity that it went hand in hand, even with the vow I made to her in marriage, and to decline upon a wretch whose natural gifts were poor to those of mine. But soft, methinks I scent the morning air. Brief let me be. Sleeping within my orchard, my custom always of the afternoon. Thy uncle stole upon my secure hour with juice of cursed hibona in a vial and into the porches of my ear did pour the leprous distillment whose effect has such an enmity to blood of man that swift as quicksilver it courses through the natural gates and alleys of the body and with a sudden vigor doth posit and curd like eager droppings into milk, the thin and wholesome blood. So did it mine. Thus I was sleeping by a brother's hand, cut off even in the blossoms of my sin, no reckoning made, but sent to my account with all my imperfections on my head. Oh, horrible, oh, horrible, most horrible. Let not thy royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. But howsomever thou pursues this act, taint not thy mind nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught. Leave her to heaven.
fairly well at once. The glowworm doth show the matin to be near, and gins to pale his uneffectual fire. Adieu. 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 Remember me. Oh, are you host of heaven? No oh, earth. What else? And shall I couple hell? Oh, fine. Hold my heart. And you, my sinews, grow not so instant old, but bear me stiffly up. Remember thee, I, thou ghost, while memory holds a seat in this distracted globe. Remember thee. Yea, from the table of my memory, I'll wipe away all trivial fond records, all saws of books, all forms, all pressures past, the youth and observation copied there, and thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter. <gasps> yes, by heaven. Oh, most pernicious woman. Oh, villain, villain, smiling, damned villain. My tables. Meet it is, I set it down, that one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least I'm sure it may be so in Denmark. So, uncle, there you are. And now to my word it is, adieu, adieu. Remember me, I have sworn to.